Okay, so uh, kia ora everyone. I'm just going to go over how to take this model and strip it down so it's a bit more usable uh, for the specific site. Um, so I've created some other model, uh, other layers and set those up so that uh, we can see them a little bit clearer. Um, so I've created a folder with, I've called it Building Mesh or Buildings Mesh and then Building BREP uh, and then Site Buildings. Uh, and the Buildings Mesh I've got locked just so that we don't mess those up. Meshes are a way of defining uh, geometry in the computer, but they can be a little bit limiting in Rhino and what you can do with them. Uh, so I can show you how we convert those. Uh, and then I've also created uh, a smaller chunk of terrain. So I've made uh, a layer to manage all of those things. Um, so pretty easy to create new layers. Just come up here and you can even embed them down a layer if you need. Um, so uh, what I have done, let's just turn some things off. Let's turn the text off. We don't need that. What I have done with um, that cube is I've just, uh, in this case, push-pulled that bottom surface down. So you could just turn a whole lot of other layers off, get the one that you want and pull it down. Uh, in your case, I would probably delete all the other uh, sites that you're um, not using. I'm just going to show uh, this one here. So, um, but before we get too far, I want to just sort out the buildings. So let's turn the terrain off. Where are we? Terrain there um, and the contours off. And then, oh, we don't need the city lines either. Um, so, and we don't need the sites. So to start off with, it's a good idea, um, and I'll just turn the building, just turn these off as well. So um, if we click on, oh, we can't, so it's locked. If I just unlock it, if I click on there, you can see one object mesh so all of the other buildings are treated as one object. So, and I'll just turn the shoreline off as well, um, which isn't much help. Uh, so if we open up Grasshopper, um, I've got this uh, helpful little script here. Uh, let's this, on. this little component is a plugin that you need to download. Uh, I find it quite useful. Um, it's called Bifocals. Um, and you can find that on Food for Rhino. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken this mesh component, uh, so this one here, um, and then we can select on that, and then it says select one or multiple meshes. In this case, we only need to one. So I selected all of those, uh, or the buildings, uh, and then we add this faces boundary. So we can go, uh, I think it's Control uh, Alt um, on a PC or option command on a Mac uh, and it tells us where components are from. So here um, this is a mesh analysis component so it's face boundaries. So we take that and you can see I've also got another little thing going on here. Let's just click into this. Uh, canvas widgets and then is it canvas widgets? Preview settings view um, oh, I've forgotten where it is. There's, uh, I'm sure it was in here, uh, and I'm sure it's in here somewhere. I just make sure those are all checked, I think. Um, but it tells you how long it takes for a function or a component to operate. So here, um, this one took 203 milliseconds, so that's pretty quick. Um, then I've got the BREP join, or join BREP. Uh, and this one actually took five minutes. So it just sits there and chugs through because there are, let's have a look, um, in the order of 60,000 values, which is a whole lot, uh, um, this takes a long time to process. So it's gone through and joined all of those um, faces. Uh, 
and then we've just merged them all together. Um, so we've ended up uh, with 5,400 buildings, I guess, give or take. Um, and then I've baked that out into this uh, buildings B rep player. So if I turn, let's just bring that down. If I turn, uh, that's what I should do, present five. Uh, so if I turn uh, those buildings off, and we can lock those, uh, and I turn those ones on, let's just save that, but close that for a second. Now if I select these, you can see these are all broken up into smaller chunks, just depending. Um, so it's a little bit more manageable. Some of them there may be like here you've got a whole block, but that's much more manageable than all of them. So I just baked what I'd done in that grasshopper definition out um, onto my buildings B rep layer. Then uh, let's just go back here to the top view. Uh, and if we turn on sites, um, make this wireframe. So we can get a sense of roughly where that uh, um, box is. In this case, you can see that's not going into wireframe because I've actually set that to be, um, uh, you can set an object to have its own display mode. So in this case, I've set it just to shaded um, rather than everything going to wireframe. So I can uncheck that there and set that to wireframe. Um, but that's quite useful to know under the properties on a specific or a, a group of selected objects, you can tell them to have their own display mode, um, which is really powerful. Uh, so um, we've got that all lined up. Now, uh, back to Grasshopper. Um, what I've done here is I've just gone through and uh, selected uh, with the BREP parameter. So here, where is the BREP? That one? No, that one. Uh, brought that in and just gone in and said select multiple BREPs, come in. Oh, let's just do that. Select multiple BREPs. Uh, so I come in. Ooh, I didn't want that one. What's going on? Let's just escape out of that. Push into. I think we have. So come back here. Uh, set multiple B reps, and then I can just come in. Oh, I, yeah. No, oh, that's doing it. Uh, and select all the ones that I want. And I might even just let's change the layer. So I don't want that on. Um, they're not going there. Um, you get the idea. Yeah. And you might want some other ones that are, are close by as well, depending on how you go. Um, let's get that one. So, and then I just push enter or return, and then it's now sucked all of those components up into into the air. So I've just done a cap holes. So um, before these were, uh, what does it say? Open B reps, they weren't closed, so you can't do as much with them. So I just was really concerned about those ones. So then I've just uh, put those um, into cap holes EX. So where does that go? Let's have a look. Uh, that's under surface and then utilities and then cap holes EX and that just allows things to be tightened up uh, so you can see here um, reference B rep and those are all open B reps uh, and then uh, we've got some closed B reps coming out the other end so I can bake that and I'd bake that out onto the layer that I set up before, so that will be um, site buildings, I've called it. 
uh, I won't do that this time. Um, so uh, that allows us close that, uh, to, um, so we've got, let's put this back to shaded. So we've got all the buildings, so the B-Rep buildings, I can turn that off, and then I've just got uh, these ones here. So they're different versions, um, uh, which in this case is not the most efficient way, but it's just a way of managing all the data that we have, um, which allows us to um, move around those a little bit quicker. Um, now I'm just going to turn my buildings off, and then I want the terrain on, um, and I want the sites on. So let's come back to perspective. And so obviously these are marking our sites. What I have done is, because um, these don't go all the way through, so I have um, selected, well I haven't done anything there, what I have done, and I'll just do it the opposite way, is there's a function called push-pull, and those that have used uh, SketchUp will uh, probably recognize this, and then I can just grab that face and push it up. Um, in this case, I pushed it up because I had pulled it down longer. Um, so you might want to, where's the terrain, turn it off. Um, do that with your other one. So I can just push, oh, I'm not there. Um, push pull, I just push return or enter again and come down and I can go, I think it's that one. Yeah. So, um, and pull that down. Um, I had some squares on there. Uh, which I deleted that one, but that may be, the other one may be quite useful for you um, as a bounding box for other things. So it's just two objects there. Um, so you can see the different parts. I'm just going to turn all those off. Um, and now go back to Grasshopper. And you can see here uh, what I've done. Hmm, that may not have, I might have messed it up. So if we come in here, select one B rep, and then we can select that. Uh, I've got solid intersection. So uh, that was then, uh, we can't quite see. Um, let's turn some bits off. So turn solid terrain off. Uh, um, and if I turn the sights off, you can see there's something else in there. Sights off. Uh, sights. That, that's left me with um, just a little bit of the terrain. So now, depending on how I want to control things, I can create um, a big part of the city if I need, or uh, I can turn layers off and I've just got my specific site. So rather than having multiple documents, it's all in one. So uh, I'll just show you that again. So the B reps, um, you can bring in geometry that's already been formed and then you can modify it in some way. So quite simply, this becomes a really uh, useful way of managing a whole lot of data or information. So here you could see we're dealing with a whole lot of different faces uh, that we've sort of merged and made into usable, more usable building elements. So uh, let's just save that. And then, so here now you can see I've just got uh, the little bit of surface. There's not a lot of terrain in this one, but you can see there's a little bit of, of curve. Um, and you could do sort of similar things with the city lines and other bits if, if you want. You could also do this something similar with the contours, uh, or you can create your own contours as well. So um, what this then does is it allows us a really good starting point for uh, using uh, Ladybug. Now we've got a sort of clean, so I can also turn on, uh, so I've got my site on, and I can go site building, so 
now we've got uh, a little bit more option and you can see there's all these sort of spaces in between these buildings that you can use as well um, uh, hopefully that helps